The Self Made Life Podcast is a podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. I'm here to inspire small, local, and creative businesses along their journey to success. I'll share a behind the scenes look at what it's like to run and scale a business, branding tips, and I'll also be chatting with other entrepreneurs to share their stories and what it's like to be self made. Welcome back to the Self Made Life Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Wyatt, and today I am here with a special guest, and that is Jesse Borsolino. Did I pronounce your last name right? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm half Italian, so I should probably know. <laughs> I just, the most Italian that I am is like just the last name. I think I'm like an eighth Italian, but. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Um, well, Jesse, I am so excited to have you on here today. Um, Jesse and I have been working together since uh, last October, September, yeah. October. I think it was around October, November time. Yeah. So Jesse um, has been our incredible copywriter. She um, helps to write the email newsletters, the blogs, uh, social media captions, all of our amazing clients' websites. It's it's to the point now where I read something like an email newsletter. I'm like, this really does sound like me. So she takes all of our ideas and all of our clients' ideas out of our head and puts it pen to paper to tell our story and their story authentically. So um, so so grateful to have you on the Monarch Design Code team and to have you here today to talk a little bit more about your entrepreneurial journey and what you do because you don't just do copywriting, you are a very talented illustrator as well. So I can't wait to touch base on that too. But before we get started, we're going to start with a uh, boss or bust. So that is sharing something that you're proud of or something that didn't quite go as planned this past week. So Jesse, can you tell us, do you have a boss or bust moment? Oh, for sure. <laughs> I feel like I have both. And Good. I'll start with my bust moment because I feel like it kind of led into my boss moment, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this week I've just been getting really down on myself for not being able to set good boundaries within my business. And it's wedding season. Things are really busy right now on the illustration side. And I just feel like I'm really bad or I've been really bad this week at saying no and then I end up saying yes to things almost just out of guilt and then I'm stressed and it's just this really bad cycle that I've been in. So I feel like I'm almost at this crossroads in my business and need to decide you know, how I want to do things moving forward and where I want to put my focus. So I've just sort of had that looming over my head and I'm in this period of figuring things out and how to let things go that aren't really serving me anymore. And just as someone who loves certainty and, and wants to make everybody happy as well, I know you can probably relate on that. The transition phase and just figuring out how to say no has been really unsettling. But I guess that kind of led me into my boss moment of the week as well. Um, because I was listening to this podcast called The Balanced Creative. I think it's a newly launched podcast. And she was talking about setting boundaries in your creative practice, which is just super fitting for where I'm at right now. Um, she, went, she said one phrase that really changed my mindset about everything, and that was you're in control of how much you give creatively. And it sounds so obvious, but it totally changed like how I was just thinking about how I run my business and... So I think my boss moment was just reclaiming my power and realizing that I am the one that's in control of this. I get to decide how I do things and what I do. Um, so yeah, it was like a boss and a bust moment, I think, this week, which is often how it works out. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. you need to have like those like hard realizations, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, that's exciting. Um, I'll have to like tune into that episode too and look up that podcast episode. Um, but I totally can relate because, 
you know, being creative, you can't just like turn it on, right? Like it's a process, right? You kind of have to give yourself that space and like flexibility. And um, I recently had a meeting with my business coach and we were kind of chatting about this, but mostly chatting about like time blocking and kind of like time blocking like your schedule. And, you know, I thought I was doing this, but I, I guess there was just too much like fluidity, like throughout my week. So right now, like I'm in the process of like restructuring my, my calendar and my week so that I can batch like creative time blocks throughout the week. Maybe it's on, you know, two days out of the week, like this YouTube video that I watched, uh, she called them potato days. So that's where you're like kind of like plopped in front of a screen or in front of like a sketchbook and you just have that time and space to create. And then, you know, days where you have your calls and got to have like flexibility, especially when, you know, you're working with clients and you want to be available for them or like discovery calls. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, you've got to like structure and you have to like set boundaries because if you don't, then it's, there's nothing worse than like a multitasker who's like jumping from one thing to the next thing to the other thing. And, you know, we were taught growing up, well, I was at least that like multitasking was an asset, but really it's, it's not because you're kind of like scattered and you're not focused on that one particular thing. So does that kind of resonate for you too? Oh, a hundred percent. Like, because I'm splitting my time right now between illustration work and then writing. And I find both of those things, like each one kind of exercises a different part of my brain and it takes time to get into the flow. Um, Like whatever task I'm working on, whether it's, you know, website copy or it's a wedding invitation or a custom art piece, it just takes time to get into that creative zone and really get into it. And then I don't know when you have like so many things going on or you're trying to multitask back and forth, it, it almost like you have to restart almost like warm back up to doing that task after. So it's just, I feel like having those time blocks is definitely something that resonates with me. I'm trying to do that more between like, okay, this is the time that I work on this illustration. And then afterwards I'm going to write for, you know, a couple hours. So time blocking is something that's been super, super important for me. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely need to restructure things Um, for me too. Um, Do I have a boss or bus moment? Um, I'm going to take it as a boss moment. Um, I feel like I got a lot done this week. Um, I was, I've kind of been in like a little bit of a fog. I just finished, uh, cycle of fertility that didn't quite go as planned but that's okay we're here we're starting a new one it's a fresh start but I was kind of feeling a little bit not all over the place but it's summer people are a little bit more laid back people are on vacation it's wedding season a lot of our clients are wedding vendors so some of our projects kind of got a little bit delayed whether they had photo shoots and waiting on photos or whatever part of the process. So we came up with some kind of like check-in solution for our team, which I think is going really well so that we all know where everyone is at with their projects and our clients every step of the way. So I think that's going really well. I hope it's a little bit better than notion just you know something to go in and check in on and on everyone um but yeah that's that's probably my well boss and bust for the week yeah (laughs) it's been it's been a a boss and bust kind of week I think (laughs) yeah yeah I know it's been kind of weird like it's summer people you know are on vacation but also you know wanting to get stuff done so it's this kind of weird weird flow I guess I don't know for sure awesome well tell us Jesse who you are and what do you do and tell us a little bit more about your story and how you got started with your entrepreneurial journey 
Yeah, so I have an illustration studio um, where I create sustainably made fine art prints, stationery, and custom art. And then I also have a copywriting studio that's dedicated to helping small businesses grow in kind of a more authentic way and connect with their audiences in a meaningful way. Um, I guess my story starts very, very young because I always grew up around entrepreneurs. Like I remember being in elementary school and my mom would pick me up for lunch um, in the middle of the day because I was super shy in school and I struggled a lot with the social aspect. So my mom we lived right a corn, right around the corner from the school, so she would pick me up for a break in the middle of the day. And when I came home, she would have like a whole new business idea planned out. And so we would sit at our dining room table, um, just coming up with slogans and sketching logos and packaging her orders. And then, you know, my grandma would come over and we would draw her logo designs for her business and try to figure out how to put my little like, like very childish sketch into the computer for her business. Um, So I always loved the idea of creating something out of nothing and I could tangibly see the people around me um, doing that. So I knew that that was possible. I always just saw people carving out their own path around me. Um, And then in combination with that, I've always just been naturally creative ever since I can remember. Like I started reading when I was two and a half and I fell in love with the whole world of storytelling and words. Um, And I was always drawing and painting with um, my siblings as well. I grew up, I, th- I mentioned, I grew up super shy. So I think the creative world was almost this like safe haven for me to express myself in a more comfortable environment that didn't have all the pressures and anxieties of like other areas of my life. So I think I always really nurtured that. And I was lucky enough to have parents that nurtured that as well um, throughout elementary school and then especially in high school. Um, but when it came time to decide what I was doing for post-secondary, I was so torn between going to art school and then going into a more traditional or practical field. So I actually ended up going with the more like practical choice, the like closest one that I was interested in, which was English literature. And I was going to go into like the whole journalism thing. And one year in, I was like, this is absolutely not for me. Like, I hate this. (laughs) (laughs) So I took a huge leap in my second year and I actually switched programs to the creative industries program at Toronto Metropolitan University, which is formerly Ryerson. Um, And in that program, I felt like I finally found my like creative home and my people and it was almost like this whole world of creativity opened up for me and I could see all of these possibilities for pursuing a creative entrepreneurial path that just I didn't know about before. So I was constantly doing internships, mostly in the digital marketing space and the editorial world and picking up a little bit of freelance work here and there. Um, But actually during that time, I let my art totally fall to the back burner. I just feel like maybe the structure of not having art class like I did in high school was just like, I just neglected it completely. So I almost had a restart into the art world later in university and then after graduating actually started by bullet journaling because it was a way for me to like justify spending time drawing because I'm like, oh, this is planning. This is productive. Um, And I started sharing some of those drawings with my friends and on Instagram and people would ask me like, can I buy this? And I had no idea though how to make that happen. But after I graduated, I decided to give it a shot and turn it into an actual business and just start selling some of my illustrations and decide like and just see where it would go um 
but I was working full time in marketing at that point. So it was a very slow start and the growth was very slow, but it just naturally blossomed, I think, into what I do now, which is doing still a lot of art prints, botanical illustrations, original paintings, and then a lot of custom art as well um, that hopes to connect people, I think, with um, just their community and the earth. Um, but yeah, my entrepreneurship journey was like this constant back and forth, I think, between art and writing and then back to writing and then back to art. And then I forget who asked me, but someone was like, what do you love like about each one? And I thought I always had to choose one path, but I realized at that point, like that they're both writing and art are rooted in the same thing, which is just storytelling. They're just different vessels of telling stories, I think. So a few years ago, I just decided to pursue both and decided I don't have to choose between these two loves of mine and started my own copywriting studio as well to help like some of the small business owners that I grew up around um, connect with their audiences. And I have never looked back and I'm still doing both. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. And it's so funny because looking back, I so I'm originally from Stony Creek, but lived in Burlington for a, a while. And I remember going into your mom's shop, which is Pure Boutique on Brant Street, which your mom was recently one of our clients and excited for her, you know, refresh and launch. But I remember going into her shop and browsing stuff and I picked, I think you had a calendar there. Yeah. And I like just recently like put two and two together, like afterwards, I was like, wait a minute okay, I remember picking up this beautiful calendar and looking at it and thinking, wow, this is so beautiful. And then interviewing you and then seeing the calendar. And then when your mom reached out for branding, I was like, wait a minute, same last name. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's so funny and, and so, so cool to, to hear and listen to your journey and really seeing like your roots, like so to speak. And it's, you know, metaphorically too, because, you know, you're into the botanical drawings and everything, but just to kind of like hear your journey and, you know, what inspired you growing up, which is like, you know, being around entrepreneurs, your grandma, your mom. I just think that it's just such a beautiful story. So thanks for sharing with us. Yeah, I think – my mom has been, cause she, yeah, she owns a lifestyle and home and fashion boutique. And I think seeing her carve out her own path um, taught me that it is possible to pursue a creative lifestyle. And for me, I am not like the most confident or outspoken person. Like I definitely don't have the boldest personality in the room. Um, so seeing her... Um, like live out her own business and grow it into what it is really helped me develop the confidence that I needed to um, like pursue my own art as well. And she was always like, of course you can do it. Like there was never any doubt in her mind that like, if you have an idea with consistency and with hard work and just um, being true to you, you can make it happen. So I think that um, just seeing her, and having her encouragement along the way was like a huge part of my journey. I don't think I would have done it if I didn't have um, that example in my life. I think I would still be working like full time nine to five in marketing if she wasn't like, you need to quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And you know what, like that just goes to show that like, it is possible to build a life and business that you love in serving, you know, people with your, your talents and your gifts, like no more of this, like starving artists BS. Like that is so like, I don't know. It's just such a dated concept. And like, I remember growing up myself, like I used to do a lot of painting. I don't really do it anymore. 
my husband is also an illustrator. So like compared to him, I know I shouldn't compare and obviously I've let it go. Um, but it, it just doesn't even compare. And I remember when I was going through high school, you know, I, I chose more of that um, stable path of graphic design rather than like a, you know, visual artist. So I really, you know, commend you for, you know, choosing and like picking up your passion of illustration. I, I miss, I miss drawing and stuff now. I mean, I draw sometimes with like rough sketches, but I always preface it by like when I share those sketches with clients, like I'm not an artist and like these are just really rough. Um, but maybe one day I'll get back to it. I think it's just like, even if you're not an artist or anything, I always tell this to people like you don't have to be super talented or a professional artist or anything to enjoy drawing and enjoy painting. Like part of what makes that so fulfilling is just like, I don't know, reconnecting almost to that like inner child, like desire to create and just have fun creating. Like you don't need to have it all together or be like, super technically skilled in that area but it's just fun and I find it super relaxing and it's always been like what I said almost a safe haven for me to just like be very expressive and be more in tune with that inner creativity and also I'm useless at computers so like graphic design wasn't even an option for me people were like oh you're good at art you could like do graphic design and I was like I no I can't (laughs) yeah I mean that's I see that a lot of times with some of my students where there's like a huge like disconnect from like the pen to paper versus like the digital space and it is it does take time and practice and like a certain kind of like, I guess like technical, like you could always learn, but it's, it's just very different. Like one is very mechanical and the other one is very technical. Yeah, for sure. I admire people that can do like, like you with these amazing graphic designs and they look so good. And I always am like, I really appreciate that because I've tried to do it myself and realize how hard it is. And so I always admire people that can do like the computer side of art, I guess. Like they both are very creative and they kind of, I don't know, they're similar, but I always admire the skills that it takes to do that. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, do you ever feel like, cause I, I know with, for me, I, I mean, I started my business like doing calligraphy, which was kind of like getting off of the computer, having fun, pen to paper again, but then it started to feel like a business. And then I kind of fell out of love with it. Do you ever have those challenges where, you know, you you have to be creative in, you know, creating or drawing a special piece, but then you're kind of like, well, this is work. Like, do you ever have that conflicting battle? I I do a lot and I think I used to have it even more when I first started my business because I didn't understand, like when I first started my business, my sole income stream was just art. And I didn't understand that you had to like build different sources of income within your business. So I like put so much pressure on these pieces that I was creating. And I was just completely burnt out because I was like, no, I have to take on this commission because like, that's my only source of income. And if I don't, then I can't pay my rent. And it was just this whole cycle. Um, But I think now, especially now that I've kind of built up my copywriting a little bit more, I'm able to like switch off for a bit and take the pressure off of creating and off of my art so I don't have that same level of burnout anymore, if that makes sense. But there are definitely periods where 
um, especially with commission work, I find not so much with like original artwork as much, but when I'm working on commission, sometimes I find myself slipping back into that mindset of just feeling like I have to do this, but I really don't want to. But I've definitely learned the importance of just switching off, even if it's for an hour and not forcing myself to do something if I'm like feeling really stressed about it or just not in the creative zone. I just feel like stepping away, doing something else, going for a walk outside, like doing something that will fill me back up has made such a huge difference. And, but it's definitely been something that I've had to work on a ton because I feel like, yeah, the first couple years of running my business was, that was a constant struggle really of like, I have to do this. It's work, but I'm feeling really burnt out and I'm not feeling very creative right now, but I have to do it. So it was just this cycle that, you know, I'm still working on trying to get out of that, but it's definitely improved. Yeah. I always find that like the summers are a lot easier when it comes to that too, because, you know, you can step outside. Like I feel like going out for a walk, like does like wanders. Oh yeah like stepping back into your creative space right yeah and the days are longer so it's like I don't know you just feel like you have so much more time for that flexibility almost like in the winter I get stuck in this trap of thinking that the day is like over at five o'clock I'm like no I can't do anything it's five (laughs) o'clock it's dark outside it's bedtime but in the summer it's like you still have you know a couple hours after work to you know do do whatever you need but yeah well let's just savor summer while it's here oh well, yeah I'm already like I don't want it to be winter no. the hibernation I've been kind of trying to force myself because it, it's easy to also like overwork yourself in the summer too I find because oh it's 5 30 6 o'clock but it's like still so light out like I can you know hammer out another couple hours because you don't have that like natural like rhythm of like the sun setting and, and having that like natural break so I've been really being conscious of okay trying to pack it in around six o'clock because that's when Tane ends his day at work upstairs he commutes upstairs I'm downstairs <laughs> Um, and then we'll meet in the middle and, you know, make dinner, or go for a walk or something. But, you know, having that like natural end to the day is really important to kind of disconnect and like fill back up your cup too. For sure. It's something that I'm still like learning how to do because my hours are so flexible and it's all, you know, project based. So it's easy when you're like really in the zone with a project to be like, I just want to crank this out and finish it. I don't care if it's like one, two in the morning, like I'm in the zone, but that's something that I'm trying to work on is like implementing more routines and using, like we said, time blocking to just try to have dedicated time to work on certain tasks. And then on the flip side of that, like knowing when to stop as well. Like, not just like, I'm starting at this time, but also I'm stopping at this time. Like, I need time to do things that actually, I don't know, fill my cup outside of work too. Because, you know, nurturing relationships with family and friends and getting outside and enjoying the summer while it's here, those are all important too. And then also, I think bring a lot back into your creative practice when you do come back from them too. So they are important, even if they don't feel like as productive, quote unquote. I think that, you know, they are actually very productive and they do help a lot when you come back to your desk. The number one way to achieve success on Instagram is through consistency. That means showing up with high quality, attention grabbing, valuable posts. Now, I know what you're thinking. It can be exhausting and overwhelming trying to keep up with the pace. That's why I've created 50 Instagram prompt ideas and 12 eye-catching Canva templates for you to use absolutely free. So all of the hard work is done for you. All you have to do is show up consistently, sit back, and watch your Instagram grow. Head on over to the link in my bio on Instagram and 
get your free templates today. Yeah, it's finding, it's all about finding that balance, right? Um, so speaking of balance, um, let's kind of shift gears and talk a little bit more about copywriting. Um, so share a little bit about how you help support small businesses through your writing. Yeah. So I, I think I mentioned, so I've always been like very into the world of writing and words and storytelling and all that. It's always existed at the same time as art. So I actually made my start into copywriting in the editorial and digital marketing world. So I did a lot of internships for small businesses that just in like the Toronto area doing internships. Um, That's when I was really introduced to the world of like SEO, email marketing, all of those like technical things. And then at the same time, I was pursuing like journalism opportunities as well and learning how to craft a good editorial story and all that. So I kind of bring this editorial approach combined with the digital marketing approach, I think. But I think for me, working with small businesses, doing copywriting, which includes like email newsletters, um, social media captions, website copy, um, is just doing so with a very authentic storytelling driven approach because I think at the end of the day we are humans connecting with other humans like that is just the core of copywriting and you know being a small business is just connecting with the community and so with copywriting my aim is just to help these small business owners reach their audiences while being very authentic to them and what makes them unique. Oh, I love that. And it really does go a long way. You can tell like when you read like an Instagram caption that is truly like authentic and and rooted in that storytelling versus, you know, something that was just like, oh, I got a post. Let's, you know, type this out quickly, (laughs) which I'm so guilty for, by the way. And that's why I have you helping me. But who would benefit from, let's say, like a blog or like an email newsletter or professional copywriting? And what really, why should a company have some sort of storytelling strategy? Yeah, so I think it goes back to that core of we are humans connecting with other humans. I always go back to that because you can, small businesses can you know, invest in paid advertisements and get really technical with SEO and um, like algorithm stuff and all of that. But I think what makes small businesses special and why they benefit so much from a storytelling driven like copywriting approach is just like helping people authentically connect with what you're doing is so important. Like that's why people love to support small businesses is because of that like community feel and that sense that you're actually like connecting personally with someone. So I always say like small businesses can really benefit from like having a blog, having a really um, like a storytelling driven email newsletter, um, social media captions, really well-crafted website copy is because it does help them drive those connections. And small business owners are like the most busy people on the planet, I'm convinced. (laughs) So just having somebody that can take the ideas that are in your head and the things that you want to achieve in your business and putting them onto paper, putting them into words and sharing those things with people is like, I think key just to really driving that community around your small businesses or your small business. I heard once, I think the saying goes like, you don't need, you know, 10,000 fans. You just need like 10 people that will each spend like a hundred dollars on you. And I think that process of like allowing your audience to really get to know your heart why you started your story is going to help you build that more loyal um, community around what you're doing. And 
create help you create a very sustainable practice I think yeah I love that and it kind of goes back to that shifting your mindset from like selling into serving us as small business owners and and entrepreneurs we didn't choose this life because well we wanted to obviously but like it it takes a very dedicated and like special person to jump into entrepreneurship and working with entrepreneurs like one-on-one like I find you know we have so much value to like offer each other and we really come from the heart and the soul and when we put that into writing and into words and into you know that authentic storytelling that's what's going to move the needle forward that's going to help you to reach more people and serve more people yeah for sure and ultimately grow yeah yeah i think like it just goes back to that like natural principle i think of like that what you put out in the world and your vibe and your mindset is going to attract people to you and i think the more that you can share that and put that out into the world, the more people will naturally just want to be around you and want to work with you. So it kind of goes back to almost like a spiritual thing as much as a technical thing in, at least in my experience, it's been that way. Yeah, totally. No, I'm all about the woo-woo, like a journal and meditate, like all the vision boards, et cetera. So I'm with you on that. Your your vibe attracts your tribe. I know that that's such a cheesy like saying, but it's true. And like when you put kindness, love and and serving and authenticity out there, that's what you'll receive back. For sure. Like people want to be around that. I think and people also just want to work with people that are going to match their energy and and put good out into the world. That's what we're all trying to do as small business owners is just put good out there and do our best and I think having a community around you that's going to support you and encourage you and really align with that is huge yeah totally so what are your top three kind of like high level like takeaway tips when it comes to this authentic storytelling that our listeners can start implementing today into their businesses I think we talk about this a lot, but being consistent is like, I think actually I would, I feel like I watched a TikTok from your business coach, Marley, and she was like, you can literally do anything if you're consistent with it. Like think about any goal, any dream that you have, like if you show up to it every single day um, as you're like authentic self, you are going to bring it to life. Like that's just how it works. So I think that being consistent is definitely something that small business owners can take away. Like if you want to start a blog or you want to grow your social media or anything like that in the copywriting space, um, but also just in like any I don't know, it applies to every aspect, I think, of running a small business, just show up consistently to it. Um, That would be like my number one takeaway, I guess. Um, Number two, I know it's very high level, but think about like what actually makes you unique, like what makes you stand out? Why did you start? Um, Just go back to those like reasons of why you started your small business, who you want to help, what gets you up in the morning and own that and be authentic with that. Share that with people because that authenticity and just being very true to, I don't know, your inner like goals and ambitions and who you want to serve. People are going to be just innately attracted to that. Um, Number three, hmm, I would say probably, I'm going to say just share your story Mm -hmm. um, any way that you can. If you want to start a blog, start your blog. Start sharing, start putting 
your words out there for people to read because nobody can read what's in your head. I tell my mom this all the time, like nobody knows what's going on in your head. So just start sharing in any way that you can and on any platform that resonates with you. If you're like a long form content person, share your story on a blog. If you don't have a lot of time and you're, you want to get things done quick and you love like Instagram, share your story on Instagram. Like just start sharing and showing up to um, whatever platforms you think are like best suited to, I don't know, how you want to grow and what you align with, what you're most drawn to. Yeah, no, I love that. And it's okay to like layer things too. If you share something on a blog, you can always repurpose that content into an Instagram story or a newsletter or something so that can reach more people because not everyone reads blogs and not everyone reads like Instagram captions or watches stories. So when you layer these things, it gets to people quicker. Yeah. And it creates that like repetition and and loyalty and trust too. I'm going to say too, like if you don't have your email marketing list started, start your email marketing list because I feel like it's the most underrated marketing tool out there. Like, I don't know, there's no other place other than email marketing where you don't have to compete with algorithms. You don't have to like compete to get eyes on your content. Like it's being delivered directly to people's inboxes. Um, And it's like the best opportunity, I think, to build that like very loyal connection with whoever is reading it and a more like add just a little bit of a more personal touch to your business like an email marketing list is like don't sleep on that so I would say if you do one thing from this is I know you've been procrastinating setting up your email marketing list and you need to like get on it (laughs) it's it's totally true because since we started ours this year my sister recently got married a couple weeks ago maybe a month ago I don't know time just flies now and um her wedding photographers were you know another business that Tane and I had connected with prior so they were already kind of like following us and we had met before but they were actually like on our email list and at the wedding they brought up that they loved our emails so like I feel like that's a huge win be out and about and like have another business or you know a email subscriber literally tell you that they really enjoy the value that they bring that you bring through your email newsletter so yeah it's a great way I think to connect like I help my mom out with hers as well and we um she recently expanded her shop and everything so we sent out an email the next day to the people that came to her opening with a little like Starbucks card where they can go into the Starbucks and like scan the little barcode. And it was like, have a free drink on us. And people came in after and they were like, thank you so much. Like you made our morning. We got our morning coffee from your newsletter. And it's just a great way to like build those connections. And people do come into her shop all the time. And it's great because like, she has a brick and mortar store. So people will actually like come in and say, we saw this in the newsletter and we want to like come try on this new like clothing piece that just arrived. Or, you know, we read your newsletter and, and saw this like news that or this new product that you're launching. Like it's really so rewarding to see that come from like an email marketing. And it, it does feel so much more personal, I think to me, just being in like the digital marketing space. Yeah, no, I love, I love your mom's emails too. Cause I get them as well. And I just always have FOMO cause I'm like, I'm not in Burlington anymore, but I can't wait to go visit the store again and see the expansion and all the beautiful things. So definitely on my list next time I'm down that way. Yeah. You did the branding and everything for her. So her signage is going up with all of the designs that you created. So you'll have to like, I can send you a picture, but you'll have to come see like your work, like in, 
I don't know, like so big on her sign and on her windows and stuff like that. It's exciting. In the wild. Yeah. It's so <laughs> Monarch funny. in the wild. Yeah. It's so funny because like before I started my business, I was working like at an ad agency and I would do, it was, it was exciting things like, but not, not what I wanted to be doing. So I remember seeing like, I designed like this, um, like long truck wrap for Organic Meadows, who is like an organic like dairy brand. And I was like, on my way to work. And I saw that and I was like, I photoshopped those cows. <laughs> or like my sister in law has a bunny. And um, when she brought home her bunny, she had like bunny food and I was like I designed that packaging this is so weird I remember photoshopping all those little bunny hairs and like the background and everything so I mean it's different now working with like small business owners because I feel like there's more heart and connection in that you're I'm not really like working with like a big corporation where it doesn't, it might not like matter as much or might not like mean as much when you're working with other like small business owners. I feel like there's more of that like authentic connection there. So I'm really excited to check out all the new signage. Yeah. I'll send you a picture when it goes in. I'm sure she will as well, but it'll be fun to see it in person when it all goes up. Amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Um, So before we kind of end off the episode, we're going to do a little rapid fire, this or that. So first thing that comes to mind, just, you know, tell me which one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Sounds good. (laughs) Uh, City or country? Country. Mountains or beach? I always struggle with this one, but I'll say mountains. Okay. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Coffee or tea? Definitely 100% coffee. (laughs) Uh, Pizza or burgers? I'll go with like a nice plant-based burger, I think. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Books or movies? Oh, man. (laughs) That one is going to kill me, (laughs) but um, I'll go with books. Call or text? Text, for sure. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you so much, Jesse, for joining us. Um, Before we sign off, let's do a little plug plug. Where can our listeners find you online? First of all, thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun, and I've never done anything like this before, so it was so fun to, like, chat with you. I know we chat all the time anyways, but it was fun to do this. Um, If anybody wants to check me out, you can find me um, at Jessie's Edit on Instagram or on my website at jessiesedit.com. Amazing. So make sure to go and connect with Jessie and thanks so much and we'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you. Hey, before you go, I just want to express my gratitude for sticking around and being here and just listening to this podcast. I would so, so appreciate it if you could leave a rating and review, subscribe to the podcast, and tell your friends and family about it. Share on social media. The more and more that we get these reviews, we get these feedbacks from you, um, and the more you share, the more that we're able to reach like-minded listeners just like you and help to provide more value. So I would just so, so appreciate it if you could share away. And yeah, thanks so much for being here.